No, I'm talking in English. Is someone translating? Yeah, yeah, I will translate. Okay. <coughs> so we're talking about dreams in psychoanalysis. And this takes us right back to Freud, who said dreams are the royal road to the unconscious. They're, they're a road to the truth and to oh, and they give us a way of breaking through at a point of impasse. Sometimes you'll be stuck with a patient. Patient gives a dream, and the dream will reveal in its hidden imagery what you've not been able to see in conscious dealings with the patient. Сны помогают нам помочь клиенту найти то, что скрыто в его то, что на поверхности мы можем не увидеть, но через его сны мы можем понять. Now, considering they're so important in therapy and in analysis, it's surprising to me that therapists often ignore them. И мне удивительно, что некоторые терапевты не используют этот путь. They, they don't really focus on the dreams the way Freud did, yeah. carefully analyzing every element. And I, I uh, just a moment, maybe it's a big bugsy. Ah, no, no, no. Okay, we go on. Too bad. Um, I have found that there are some dreams from the same patient, she's talking about the same patient, some dreams that make a lot of sense to me. They just, they're so clear, they come through to me and they really help. Others, I can't make head or tail of them. Некоторые очень ясные, и можно их прочитать, понять сразу, а некоторые затуманены. And I think to myself, why is that? And it's because sometimes Почему the dreamer so? and the therapist are just not ready to deal with the material. Потому что сновидец и терапевт не готовы. All right. Oh. Well. Yes. <laughs> I was about to give up. Okay. Well, fine. well, now you have Anna's room number, right? Because you have it in that email. Bugsy? Yes, I believe so. But it, it got confusing for a while, yeah. Yes, but. it got very confusing. All right. So we're just talking about dreams being highly valued by therapists and analysts. Um, they're the road to the unconscious, the road to getting through an impasse. And это путь прохождения в прошлое. He doesn't need he doesn't need translation. But Buxy speaks English. Yeah, yes, he is English speaking. I'm translating for my group. Well, I, I, I already said it to them. But we'll move on now. Now you can start translating again. Uh -huh. We're we're revisiting Freud's talk about dreams. He was not the first person to think about dreams. But he was the first to really discover the dynamic meaning behind the dreaming imagery. Um, in the old days, before Freud, the idea of dream interpretation was to apply a set of universal symbols to detecting the meaning of a dream. And these dreams, they were often foretelling the future kind of dreams. But Freud looked on dreams as something that tells how the past is influencing the present. And he describes certain elements that go into the construction of a dream. Uh, and the first was condensation. Condensation. Now, do you know what condensation means? I, I mean, have you studied this before so that I can ask you and you can tell me what condensation is? Okay, who would like to try a definition? Okay, let's go. Okay. 
Just say, say it in Russian and Anna will translate for me. I see it. I see him getting it with the finger. She's going, mm. yes. It's a matter of pulling a number of disparate broad elements yes. into one single image that stands for a multitude of others. The next one is displacement. What do we mean by displacement? You can show me with your hands if you like. <laughs> yeah, it's pushing something very central to the side or taking something and, and saying the main thing is hidden other main thing it's been displaced into the dream element that we now see so in other words i could be having a conflict with my father but in the dream it's represented as a fight with my brother or a fight with my boss let's say the next one is symbolization in this one a fine example for this is where a classical dream or a, a cello which is a, a musical instrument and the dream appears to be about the playing of the cello but in fact that cello is a symbol for the genitalia and the playing of the cello for the masturbation yeah. Um, then we talk about reversal, presents opposite of the underlying wish. And lastly, dramatization. The dream gives a story of what is going on. And what interests me most is that in the session, therapist will be drawn in to the story of the dream and they will dramatize the central conflict of the dream in their relationship in the session. For instance, in the dream, the person dreams about um, catching a train at the station but they come late to catch the train and the train has already left. Can you please say that, Anna? Yes, yes, I'm, I'm translating. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. Um, and it won't surprise you then that this is a patient who has actually come late to the session. So the dream captures the wish to be late, mm -hmm. the okay. wish to be the session. Then perhaps the dream will give more insight into why the person was late. Maybe more than they know, because they'll come late, they'll say, yeah, it was bad traffic. But the dream tells us the person really doesn't want a train at all. They really would rather have gone by air. The train is inferior to them, and so they really didn't want to catch the train. They'd much rather have to go by air. And that says there's a, there's a different type of therapy that they would rather be engaged in. Why they come late? They'd rather not be there. They'd rather be somewhere else. Please, slowly. I'm talking about how the therapist and patient will enact in the session the content of the dream. And the dream can help them understand the behavior. Uh, this might be a good time to hear the dream that one of you prepared. Now, when I asked for a dream, 
Of course, I meant a dream from one of your patients. But what I have here is a dream from one of you. Когда я просила прислать сон, я думала, это будет сон пациента одного из вас. Но это оказался сон одного из вас. Yes, so I'm not going to be comfortable to go deeply into the unconscious conflict specifically gave me this as I would with a patient. I could let my fantasies run. <coughs> However, we can work with these two dreams as examples. Um, and it's very nice that there's two of them because we see a progression between the two dreams, we can compare and contrast them. All right, so Anna, would you please read the two dreams in maybe, Russian? Maybe she will read in herself. Or I read in English. She will read in Russian. Do they have the Russian? She, she is here and she will read. Okay, so she'll read it in Russian. Now, what about Bugsy? Does he have the dream in English? No, no, no. I'm going to send Bugsy the dream in English so he knows what's yeah. happening. Okay. All right, you start reading in Russian. Okay. Dreamer lady, read in Russian. I'm not listening because I don't understand it anyway, but when you're finished, I'll come back in. <laughs> Okay, she finished. Okay, perfect. So Bugsy has received the two dreams. I've seen him reading. Okay. Uh-huh. And 
Now let's look at the two dreams. Dream one is, is set in the dark and in the winter. And apparently both dreams are set in the winter. So it's probably that time of year that the person had the dream. But the first is set in the dark, the second is in the daytime. We immediately see a progression from the dark to the light. I walk up to some kind of an old factory and there might be bad people there and there's definitely a frightening dog. Is that is Anna talking? No. And what is the central affect in the dream? What is the central affect in the dream? Fear. Fear. Absolutely, it's fear. And that fear is it's located in dark black dog all of these things coming up as the person tries to go home on the way home these these fears come up and somehow or other the person was able with the help of the dog owner restraining the dog to go home so she she was able to get home now we can't know just from hearing the dream exactly what all this means we don't know why the person was afraid we don't know what the dog represents we only know that that's an example of condensation and displacement from something else onto a dog with the color of black and at this point we don't know if black is really a representation of blackness referring to some kind of racial minority or if it's the opposite of white, that really is a white thing that is the frame. Yes, we, yes. Well, we don't, we don't know, and I'm not really asking the dreamer to tell us, because to me no, that's no, no, all. No, just to translate, just to translate. Please. Yes, yeah. In the second uh, dream, uh, the color of the dog is not clear, it's not exactly black. But okay, well, we haven't got to the second dream yet. Let's move to the second dream. Um, well, for the first dream, did you feel you inhabited the dream? I mean, I, I did. I felt I was right there in the street, this cold street, with this scary black dog. I felt it communicated very clearly to me the sense of cold, dark, and fear. Well, uh, can you translate that? Yes, uh, yes, I felt, I felt loneliness. Uh, I felt Something I didn't really know why I was going to that factory. But uh, there was something important because every, everyone was going gathering there. Absolutely. Now, we we're going to turn to the second dream. We don't know what the factory is. Okay? But look what happens in the second dream. I'm going to the psychoanalysis club. 
held at the home of a psychoanalyst, whoever that is. Yeah. So now this second dream tells us that the first dream about going to the factory, it's a factory where they make people into analysts. It's not that easy to leave the analytic environment and go back home. You still have to live your life with other people who don't necessarily go along with this analysis thing. <clears throat> yes, just to translate, please. Please. Okay. So, so now there is another meaning of home. In the first dream, it seems that home is going home to your own place. In the second dream, the home referred to is that of the psychoanalyst. Suddenly, psychoanalysis is in the factory, it's in the club, it's in the home of, of the analyst. I mean, it's everywhere. And that alone is pretty scary. And then she meets an ex-boyfriend. And strangely, He's very pleasant and welcoming. There's a, there's a, a social invitation which also carries an element of intimacy that was lost in relation to that person. And now comes the dog again. This time, we do not know that the dog is black. We only know that the dog is very tall. Tall dog. It's not as black, but it's bigger now. And the fear comes up again. So again, we hear about the fear, apparently of the dog. But I'd have to say that's a displacement onto the dog. And now we hear, really, the fear is about analysis itself and what it promises to reveal, to uncover, to offer, to expose, and so on. Now, I said to you that the dream often becomes part of the dramatization of the session. <laughs> we see that thing here. Um, look at the fear in the opening moments of this seminar. We, you're meeting at the home of the analyst. You're, you're in a psychoanalysis factory. It's got someone coming in from the Philippines, someone coming in from the US. It, it, it's, it's more anxiety provoking than if you were alone speaking Russian to each other, understanding each other so easily. It's not the same stretch. And, yeah. So, I mean, you, you know, you could all think together about exactly who the dog is. Might be me. Might, you know, might be a black dog to distract us from noticing it's really a... 
I'm not, I'm not saying this is a fact. I'm saying these are possible ways of relating to a dream. Thank you so much for that example. It just, it just was really terrific, absolutely ideal. And I would love to have your permission to use these two dreams in my teaching elsewhere, if I may. Okay, thank you. Um, now I'm returning to the lecture. <laughs> How then do we work with a dream? Well, you bring to it the kind of knowledge that I've shared with you today. But you don't assume that you understand it. You just let these things float in your mind while you listen to what the patient says next. Because whatever they say next is the association to the dream. And it's not only what they say next, it's what they do next. You know, do they rise on the couch? Do they... Yeah. And in your mind, you connect the dream to the present day. You know, how does this reflect the patient's current situation in their life at home, at work? And how does it reflect upon the relationship that the patient and I are developing? In other words, the dream can be a communication of the transference. You find yourself in the transference. And you also look in the dream for a display of the internal object relations set of the patient. You know what I mean by internal object relations set? <clears throat> okay, well, growing up, the infant takes in experiences with the caregivers and puts them inside as psychic structure. So you have an image of the object which stands for the experience with the other person. You have an image of yourself relating to that object and all the feelings that connect you. Pushed inside is an internal object relationship, which grows and develops as the child moves through the developmental stages. And if it's if it's pleasant, it remains in consciousness wherein it's been frustrating, it gets suppressed into unconsciousness. These internal object relationships are always seeking to return to consciousness. You want to get back, back into the open where they can continue to grow and learn. And there are forces against them. There, there are repression and dissociative forces trying to keep them out of there. And the work of analysis has to do with making it safe for these repressed internal object relationships to return to consciousness. Yeah. A dream can be looked on as a little film of the inside of the person's personality. And you can see the internal object relationship working. Now, going back to the dream. The, the self part of the relationship is active in the dream, is walking something important. 
она нам говорит о чем-то важном. So the object of the dream is to go to a factory. That's the goal. That there's the self is reaching for a factory that offers something we don't know what in the first dream. We know by the second dream. Через страх, но идет туда. It's is the self is actually reaching for a psychoanalytic object. An object of understanding of meaning that will that will embody both the images of the parental figures in some way, but also offer hope for new figures that will be more growth promoting than the old figures. You want to translate that? Last sentence, please. Um, I'm saying that the hope is that the psychoanalytic object uh, will be more growth promoting than the parental yeah. objects it also represents. So, psychoanalytic object, or psychoanalytic, да, будет более полезен в том, чтобы он теперь как спокойнее или нормально вырос этот мир. Now, there's another internal object relationship represented in this dream, which is a girl restraining a black dog. So there's there's a rejecting internal object relationship there, suppressing the the violence of that black dog. Whether it represents an aggressive force or a sexual force, either way it has to be stopped and not allowed to hurt this woman who's trying to get. Now, in the second dream, we have yet another representation, which is the self in relation to a loved person, boyfriend, a man, who, however, may have been an exciting object at one time, but is now a rejecting object but in the dream he becomes a kind of a neutral good object welcoming making a cup of tea yeah. so so my example shows that we don't just listen to the dream and think that it's about a woman walking down the street in the winter. Please repeat one more time about winter. We don't just think of the dream as a story about the patient walking through the street in winter. Mm -hmm. it's, it, that's the manifest context. We look beyond that, yeah. the underlying latent. Do you speak Russian, Bugsy? No. Okay. No, no, no. Just English. All right. Okay. Um, so you're looking, you look, you try to find the wish and the affect in the dream. With them sneer. You try to figure out what is the wish, what is, what is, it, what is the dream trying to express of the current wishes and the infantile wishes that are much harder to admit to. And you don't just take the dream as a whole story. You, you give the patient the chance to analyze the dream themselves by giving their associations. But if the dream is not helping the patient see more, then you have to help them by picking out elements of the dream that are worthy of further exploration. 
вы ему наводящими вопросами помогаете увидеть больше, чем говорит небесный. Does you're always looking to unearth the infantile transference to you, the, the very primitive wishes. Это может быть какое-то очень примитивное желание младенца, малыша по отношению к вам. The aggressive and sexual fantasies. Скорее всего, тут агрессивные и сексуальные фантазии. And, and indeed, sometimes a dream will present a memory. А иногда это воспоминание. That, that, that has not been remembered consciously, but it exists. This is particularly true of trauma. Now, once in a while, you'll get a patient who gives a tiny dream. It's just like, oh, yeah, I just was dreaming about an eggplant. That's all. There's nothing else to the dream. So they toss it away. It doesn't mean anything. But if you stop and say, well, tell me about an eggplant. And you start to get into the shape of an eggplant, the bitterness of an eggplant, how you have to cook with an eggplant. Uh, the fact that the shape of the eggplant may recall a pregnant abdomen. The, the childhood hatred of being fed eggplant and made to eat vegetables. There, there can be so much there if you just explore. Ну, допустим, там, что про яйцо или яичницу, да, что, тоже остановить. Он просто, допустим, там яйцо будет. А что, какая фигура, как что? Может быть, это как раз выяснится история про беременную. А может, это о том, что его пичкали яйцо, яйцо, и там яичница, яичница, а он хотел овощи. Или, может быть, наоборот. Что-то. And always think about the impact of the dream on you. В общем, мы ищем влияние этого сна на, на наш, жизнь наших пациентов, на нашу работу. И, конечно, вы разбираете сон с позиции своего контрперенеса. So, for instance, when I talk about the two dreams you brought me today, если про эти два сновидения, by the time I've read the second one, I understand there's a communication to me about fear of me and the psychoanalytic insight that I am offering. Yeah. So we have three minutes. Do you want to say anything, anybody? Bugsy wants to say something, okay? Yes, may I ask sure. a question? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yes, you said towards the end that you always have to think about the impact of the dream on you, you know, referring to the counter transfers. I wonder if um, in your practice, is it something that you would advise that you articulate to the analysand or the patient, or is it something that you only keep to yourself during the, the session? Right. Um, you use it um you do you don't say oh i feel very frightened about this or something like that yeah you yeah say this is saying to me a lot of fear or you might say this dream might be a fear not only of dogs, but, but of me as someone who is very close to the psychoanalytic club that you're on your way to see. So I use it that way. Mm -hmm. no, you, don't, you don't make the dream about you. You just find yourself in the dream if it is about you. And to some extent, it always will be because, as the analyst, you represent the unconscious. You, you, that's what you're there for. And as such, you're kind of a hopeful but also a scary person. Mm. Nobody knows what they're going to find out about themselves, how acceptable it's going to be, or how they're going to come to terms with it, or how they're going to get over it, or mature beyond it. 
Mm -hmm. trainees, how are they going to learn to help other people with it while they're still learning themselves? It's a scary matter. Well, we're at our time boundary there, Anna. So I'd like you to thank everyone, especially the dreamer. And I'll see you. Thank you. Bye bye. Ah, I'm so grateful. We knew Spill. No, but not come to Spill. Back here. This is our small group. Hi. Nice meeting you all, fellow classmates. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Anna. Yes. Bye bye, Batsy. See you. See that was interesting. Thank you. Okay. Uh,